Anyone that's been 3D printing for any time at all knows the importance of proper bed leveling. And in my video earlier this year titled the top five beginner tips that I had for people getting into 3D printing, the second point on that list was to take the time to learn how to level your bed. After all, if your bed is not leveled correctly, not a whole lot is going to matter if your part comes off of your build plate or if you have warping or if things just aren't sticking down correctly. Now, aside from making sure that your bed is leveled and using the proper build surface or adhesives for the specific material that you're printing with, there are a couple of things built into slicers that can really help to make sure that your print is successful. The three primary ones are going to be skirts, brims, and rafts. And last year I did make an entire video dedicated to skirts and I recently touched a little bit on brims in my video on how to print with ABS. However, I felt like for beginners that are just wanting to be able to understand kind of these three different things, having them all in one video, a little bit more summarized with a couple of examples and how I use them could really be beneficial. So in today's video, we are going to be covering these three different adhesion functions that are built into most uh, modern slicers. I'll take you guys through how I've been using them over the last couple of years and what my settings are in Cura. With that being said, I know every time I make a video that's kind of surrounded around some sort of a slicer, I get comments from people saying, well, hey, that's not the slicer I use. And the positive thing about these is that they are quite universal and every slicer I believe that I've used will have these functions built in so you can kind of take uh, what you see in here and learn and apply it to your slicer of choice, whatever, whatever your daily driver might be. So with that being said, and without further ado, let's get right to today's video. Massive thanks to Thanks for sponsoring today's video. With over 2 million index models in their database and growing regularly, Thanks finds the exact model that you're looking for. Thanks has some pretty unique features, like the ability to perform a geometric search or the recently added AR mode that I love. I'm a very visual person, and having the ability to place a 3D model in your space before actually printing it for reference can be quite useful. Also, it's a lot of fun and can make for some great photos. There are also great collaboration functionality baked right in, like the ability to create a private team for working on projects where you can keep track of things like different model versions as well as revisions. You also have the ability to follow a user's project, which is great for any that are actively being updated. Things has been developing new features for their site constantly, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this platform continue to expand. Links will be in the description so that you can find out more and check out things for yourself. All right, so we are going to be going from skirts to brims and then to rafts. I chose that uh, direction or that uh, lineup specifically because that is the order I use them from most often used to least often used. So skirts are going to be filament paths that are added and extruded around the part or parts that you are planning to print. When you slice a file and you have skirts enabled, before the printer actually goes and starts printing the file that you want, it is going to trace a certain number of lines around the area where your part is going to then be printed afterwards. For this example, we're going to use this print in place phone stand model that I found over on Things. If I import this into Cura and I slice the file, under preview, you will see what I'm sure you expected, which is the sliced file ready to be exported and printed. Now, if I go down to the build plate adhesion and select skirts, when I slice the file again, you will now see this single filament path around the outside of the part. On just about every single part that I print, no matter what, I have skirts enabled. It is not uncommon when a printer starts printing a file for it to take a couple of seconds for the filament to start flowing continuously through the hot end. And if you don't have skirts enabled, it doesn't have any area to actually prime that nozzle. And so it'll start printing out your walls or your perimeters of your part. And in best case scenario, when the part's done and you look at the base, you could probably see where there was a little bit of filament that maybe should have been extruded on the edge that just didn't get extruded, but it might not be that big of a deal. However, in more extreme situations, I've seen where that little bit of non-extrusion at the beginning can actually be the catalyst that causes your part to end up warping and ultimately failing. Also, when the hot end does heat up, it is not uncommon from either pressure built up in the hot end and extruder or just gravity to have a little bit of filament that droops down from the nozzle. And sure, you can get in the habit of just standing there and pulling it off while the print's about to start. But if you have a skirt, you don't really have to worry about that because it's just going to take that blob and then lay it down in the skirt, which is away from your part, instead of that blob actually making it down into your part, which again, just doesn't look good in best situations and in worst situations, if it's a pretty fat blob, the nozzle could actually hit it and it could cause a skipped step. 
Now the mentioned nozzle priming as well as the blob removal can actually be taken care of by adding a few lines to your starting G-code where when the hot end heats up before printing your part, it'll just go off to the side and draw one line and then it'll start printing out your part. And that method does work pretty well. However, it does not take care of the third and final reason that I use skirts, which is bed adhesion validation. Although at this point I do feel very confident in my ability to properly level a bed, Having a skirt really allows me to take a look at a part before it's fully started and make sure that nothing's shifted or nothing needs to be re-leveled. And I can easily see on that skirt whether things are looking too close or too far away. And while it's making its rounds and drawing these skirts, I can quickly adjust the four bed leveling knobs in each direction if needed, or I can adjust the Z baby stepping if it is an automatically leveled printer. Since I'm able to see this before the print actually starts, it saves me quite a bit of time because if I didn't have those skirts and it started to print apart, I would then have to actually kill the print, remove whatever it's laid down, and then have it restart the print, which if the bed's cooled down, it can just add up in time. So having that little skirt around the beginning eliminates the need for that. And again, it just helps with kind of optimizing and speeding up my printing workflow. Cura by default has it set to one skirt line count, but I personally use three. The reason for this is that it allows me to see the first line go down, determine whether any adjustments need to be done, and confirm that my adjustments are good on the second or third pass before it jumps to the part. Skirt line count is a setting in Cura that is hidden by default, so clicking on the gear that pops up next to build plate adhesion brings up the menu that will allow you to enable it. I really cannot stress how valuable I feel skirts are in 3D printing and how much I utilize them. Next up, we have brims. And no, I didn't change into a hat because I realized my hair doesn't look very good. I grabbed a hat because this is actually how I was always very uh, easily able to understand the way brims work. And so the way I envision it or the way I picture it, which might make sense to some of you guys, and if it doesn't, bear with me, but imagine that this is your part, the like my head portion, or this part of the hat is the actual model you wanna print. Well, this would be the brim, or in this case, bill of my hat, but on a brim, this portion would be wrapped around the entirety of your part, but it is attached to your part. It's not separate. So while a skirt is going to have a gap between your part and the skirt, and its primary goal is to, again, prime the nozzle, remove any residue, and be validation for your bed being leveled still, a brim is used to actually hold onto your part almost for your dear life, and it gives it a bit more surface area to then cling onto your bed. So the primary use I've had for using brims over the years is really when I'm printing with higher temp materials or more advanced materials that have a higher tendency to warp, typically due to their larger shrinkage ratio. I mentioned that in my recent video, printing with ABS, I used a brim and that was just to ensure that I wasn't going to have any warping on the parts. With ABS it's not necessarily fully needed but I always have the mindset of if I can just have a brim on this part which is typically easy to move at least on ABS then it's worth it to me versus possibly losing a three hour part. Brims are definitely not something that I use all the time and again unlike skirts that are separate from your part these will actually need to be removed upon completion of your print and Depending on the material that you're printing with, sometimes brims can be fairly easy to move where you can just like with ABS kind of bend the brim and it'll peel right off while other materials I printed with such as polypropylene actually required some kind of a deburring tool to remove the polypropylene brim from the actual model itself. For the brim example, I'm going to use this Hamera Volcano double fan mount. This is a functional part that will be sitting right next to the hot end, so you may want to print it in a higher temp material. Importing this in Akira, I sliced it without a brim just to show you how the part would look and then with the brim enabled. The brim is pictured in this sort of cyan color and you can see that it wraps around the entirety of the part. From the bottom view, you can see that unlike the skirt, like I mentioned, which has a gap between itself and our part, the brim actually goes all the way up and connects with your part. There are also a few settings you can play around with for the brim, but the only one I typically adjust is the brim's width. By default, Kira has it set up to eight millimeters, which is completely fine, but for the Voron parts that I recently printed, I had it set to five millimeters, which was plenty. Although I've only really used them with these higher temp or more warp prone parts, I have seen people use them pretty effectively with materials like PLA or PTG. And the usual application is a part that has a very, very small footprint. So let's say you have a model that for some reason is kind of like angled, right? Where it's a small footprint, it comes out at an angle and it's really top heavy. Well, you could just 
hope your adhesion's good, slice it and, you know, kind of make, make a silent prayer that it doesn't fall over on you. But having a brim will expand that surface area and give your part a better chance at succeeding and not actually tipping over. So you'll have to kind of decide which parts need them. Again, for me personally, it's only been for higher temp and advanced uh, or more warp prone parts, but I have seen a few instances where there's just some kind of a crazy model that I just don't think can support itself and having a brim can really help to kind of latch it down. Last but not least, we have rafts, which I think took its name or its inspiration from something like a life raft. And Unlike skirts, which wrap around the outside of your part but do not touch your part, and brims that do wrap around the outside of your part and connect to your part, rafts actually are underneath your part and your printed model or your STL, your file, is going to be printing on top of that raft. This one I feel is going to be much easier to start with the visuals, so I'm going to use this shelf support I found as an example. Slicing the part with no raft enabled and then enabling rafts, you can see the large blue mass underneath the part that the part then sits on. There are a pretty large amount of settings in Cura you can play around with to give you better control of the output should you decide to want to look through them. When to use rafts? Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I haven't used rafts in years unless I am testing out a 3D printer and on the micro SD card or on the memory card, there is a pre-sliced file that just so happens to have a raft on them. And I have seen other people that use rafts the way I use brims, where if they're printing with some kind of a high temp or more warp prone material, they'll lay down a big raft and then start printing their part on top of that. But that is not something that I have used them for. Rafts are typically printed with some fair fairly large extrusion paths that kind of form this coarse grid that then your part will be printed on. And my biggest issue with this is that unlike printing on something like glass or printing on something like PEI that gives your the bottom of your part a nice clean look, I feel that when you remove your part from rafts, it's typically not the best looking. And I understand that in situations where you're possibly using a raft, maybe the aesthetics of your part aren't the most important and you're just really going for success, which is totally fine. But again, I haven't needed them as a form of adhesion help, at least not in a really long time. Personally, I feel that rafts are something that were a lot more useful like five or six years ago when I first got into 3D printing for a couple of reasons. When I first got into printing, it was actually not that uncommon for printers to not come with a heated bed. And so if you don't have a heated bed, your adhesion is not going to be as good. And although you can certainly get away with things like PLA on a non-heated bed, a lot more people use these rafts to make sure that they had a solid foundation and that their parts weren't going to be warping. And also, the beds and just printers in general were a lot more finicky, so uh, leveling the bed and maintaining the level was typically more of a chore, and so the raft, because it is much more of a coarse print, gave you a little bit more leniency in case your leveling was a little bit off or if your bed was a little bit off. Now, there is another way that I've seen them used recently, which to me is kind of more of a patch or a band-aid, but let's say you have a build surface and your build surface got really jacked up, right? Like you have some kind of an adhesion sheet, whether it's build tack or some other adhesion sheet, and your part almost bonded with it and it tore off a little chunk so you have a divot and that's causing issues. Well, I could see a raft as being something you would want to lay down to kind of cover those imperfections in your bed and at least give you consistency amongst the raft. But again, that's more of a band-aid and that's not something I use. If, if I have an issue with a bed adhesive, I usually swap it out for a glass or powder coated PEI or something of that nature. But again, it's at least a use case that might be handy for some people if you just jacked up your bed surface and you don't have a spare one on hand. And those are the various standard build plate adhesion kind of assistance types. And those have been around for a really long time. It's certainly nothing new. There's a bit more customization available uh, in slicers for those things, but they have been there for a very, very long time and they are incredibly useful. Again, I use skirts in every single print and brims have definitely come in handy to save my butt on more than one occasion when I'm printing with a material that is just being really stubborn or again, just doesn't want to stick down to the build plate. And there are a couple of other adhesion things out there. I know there's these things called lily pads that are almost like, uh, kind of like a hybrid of what a uh, brim or a raft is that I might be looking into for a future video, but I'll cover that kind of on its own because I think it's just maybe a little bit more advanced. And this is a really good core foundation on how to use those three main settings. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a better understanding of skirts, brims, and rafts, how I use them, maybe how you can implement them if you haven't used them. Um, 
If you have any questions at all, definitely let me know in the comments down below, or if you've got anything you'd like to add as far as you know things I missed out on or how you're using some of these different things, that would be super handy. And uh, I've learned actually quite a lot from the comments section. So thank you for everyone that gives me feedback and also adds to the conversation. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you guys allowing me to come back each and every week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.